With a plethora of villains in the comic verse, you definitely don't know the origin story of all of them. Hey guys, my name is AJ with Top 10 Nerd, and these are the top 10 villain origin stories that you've definitely never heard of before. At number 10 is Calendar Man. So you think you've heard all the villain origin stories, huh? Well, have you ever met Julian Day, the Calendar Man? This guy's obsession with time and dates would make even the most punctual person seem laid back. He'd celebrate holidays like nobody's business, but his calendar fixation led to some serious mental unraveling. You see, he dabbled in a life of crime with unique twist, pulling off heists tied to specific calendar dates. Batman, being the cape crusader he is, couldn't resist, and the two engaged in an ongoing dance of cat and mouse. But here's the twist. After some stints in Arkham Asylum, Julian somehow became a useful asset to Batman. He helped him crack the case of the holiday unaliver, a case that the calendar man himself was initially the prime suspect for. Nowadays, Julian's obsession has evolved into metahuman abilities as he ages and regenerates with the seasons. Winter brings wrinkles and spring, well, it's like a youth serum turning him into a newer, younger version of himself. Just goes to show even the weirdest obsessions can lead to some unexpected supervillain stories. At number 9 is Ice Cream. So if you haven't heard of him, Ice Cream is a minor villain who only appeared in the obnoxious The Clown number 1 X-Men comic. Ice Cream is a mutant supervillain with the power to turn his entire body into any flavor of ice cream. That's right. In his ice cream form, he can change his shape, melting into a puddle to slip under a door. His costume is made of unstable molecules, so it can turn into ice cream along with him and then change back. His origin story is that people laughed at him because of his ridiculous powers, and he blamed the X-Men because their incredible powers made his look ridiculous in comparison. So he made a plan to destroy them so that everyone would respect him. He also made ice cream puns like lickety banana split and easy as pie a la mode and at one point he even said curses like a typical cartoon villain. If you're enjoying the video so far please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd and ringing that notification bell. And number 8 is the Rainbow Rider. Roy G. Bivolo aka the Rainbow Rider is not your typical comic book villain. Growing up Roy had dreams of becoming a famous artist but there's a catch. He was colorblind. While other kids were out playing Roy spent his time perfecting his craft only to be met with disdain for his art due to his inability to see the true beauty of colors. But Roy's story takes an even darker turn. His father, an optometrist and optical tech expert, vowed to find a way to cure his son's condition. Tragically, he passed away before he could fulfill that promise. But before he could, Roy's father handed him a pair of goggles that he had been developing. These goggles had the power to emit solid rainbow colored light beams, which I mean, kind of misses the target a little bit. Fueled by bitterness over his failed artistic pursuits and his father's unfulfilled promise, Roy chose a different path. He embarked on a life of crime, using the goggles to create chaos and establish himself as the Rainbow Raider. At number seven is Shaggy Man. No, it's not Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, although I wish it was. This guy was actually a freaky creation of Dr. Andrew Zagarian, who was just trying to find a substitute for lost human tissue. He whipped up something called Plast alloy and decided to beef it up with a dash of salamander DNA. But here's where everything goes south for science. A big old human error occurred and this artificial body he was working on turned into a hulking hairy giant he cleverly named the Shaggy Man. No PhD required to see where this is going. The Shaggy Man goes bonkers attacking anything that moves. Plus it can regrow any body part that it loses thanks to its salamander DNA. The doctor was in way over his head and had to call in the Justice League for backup. But even then those superheroes couldn't handle this monstrosity. But leave it to the Flash to come up with a genius solution. He tells the doctor to create another Shaggy Man, and then they toss these immortal beasts into a deep pit where they're stuck battling each other for all eternity. At number six is Victoria Murdoch. The villainess known as the Asbestos Lady had a burning grudge against the original Human Torch. To face the fiery hero, she decided to deck herself out in a fireproof asbestos suit, making her nearly invincible to the Human Torch. But she craved more power and tried to strong arm her scientist friend 
Fred Raymond into enhancing her asbestos abilities. The Torch kept a close eye on Raymond's home and thwarted her plans. Fueled by revenge, the Abestos lady caused a train wreck to off the Raymonds, but their son Thomas survived unscathed. She tracked his fire resistant talents as he joined a circus act, but again, the Torch foiled her plans by melting her boots to the road. Then in 1947, her twin brother Murdoch met his end at the hands of the Torch and Toro. Abestos lady resolved to wipe them out as she lured them into traps, inducing an asbestos lined net, but they survived. But despite her escape attempts and alliances with villains, the asbestos lady ended up behind bars, vowing vengeance. However, she eventually succumbed to mesothelioma, probably due to all that asbestos exposure. At number five is Fred Myers, the Boomerang Man. Have you ever heard of a villain who started off as a pro baseball player? No? Well, let me introduce you to Boomerang, AKA Fred Myers. He's not your typical bad guy. You see, back in the day, he was swinging for the fences in the baseball world. But then he got suspended for taking bribes. That's right, he went from hitting home runs to hitting people. But wait, it gets crazier. A criminal organization came knocking on his door and Fred joined the dark side as an assassin. He worked for some big names like Justin Hammer, the Kingpin, the Masters of Evil, and even the Sinister 12. Then he had a brief stint as a hero during the Marvel Universe Civil War, going by the name Outback. But of course, he couldn't resist the allure of the criminal life for long. Now he's a part of the Thunderbolts, a team of reformed supervillains. Boomerang's not just any run-of-the-mill bad guy either. He's a sharpshooter with a lethal arsenal of customized boomerangs from explosives to tear gas. So the next time you see a baseball game, remember that not all athletes stick to playing fair. At number four is Leapfrog. An unusual and relatively obscure villain in the Marvel Universe offers not one, but two intriguing origin stories. First, we have Vincent Petilio, a struggling inventor who decided to take matters into his own hands. Frustrated with his lack of success, he crafted a frog-like suit equipped with electric leaping coils. Sadly for him, Daredevil foiled his criminal aspirations not once, but twice. And later, Iron Man joined the party, ensuring Patilio's stint in jail. Fast forward to post-prison life where financial hardship followed the tragic loss of Patilio's wife to cancer. His son Eugene took up the mantle as Frogman, causing some father-son superhero drama. But then when the villainess White Rabbit resurfaced, Petilio went undercover to help the police, leading to a unique family showdown against the White Rabbit. Next, let's talk about Buford Lang, a bad dad who stumbled into a leapfrog costume. His encounter with Daredevil on a rooftop took a shocking twist involving his own son Timmy, who didn't want to see Daredevil hurt. This electrifying turn of events led to Lang's unfortunate demise until he was eventually resurrected, of course. <laughs> His comic books. At number three, meet the Sultan of Sauce, the Condiment King. If you've seen the Lego Batman movie or the Harley Quinn animated series, you've encountered this master of salvary savagery. In the Lego movie spinoff, he joined the Joker's gang attacking Gotham, and in Harley Quinn, he's Poison Ivy's Kite Man rival. Yep, the Condiment King is a real DC villain, though he's not exactly keeping Batman up at night. Batman the animated series introduced him where he fell under Joker's control, who made him wield condiments as weapons. Before his spicy turn, he was Buddy Sandler, a comedian brainwashed by the Joker to threaten people with ketchup and mustard at a fancy restaurant. In the comics, his real name was Michelle Mayo, a name that doesn't exactly command respect. But in Birds of Prey number 37, he concocted a poison that sent Blue Beetle, Black Canary, and Robin into anaphylactic shock. Deliciously evil, am I right? At number two, Clock King's comic history is a curious tale of obscurity turned cool. See, back in the 1960s, he made his debut in the world's finest comics number 111, a crook who really, really loved clocks. And well, that's about it. Over the next two decades, he only popped up a couple more times in some of the world's finest backup stories. One of those tried to give him a backup story, but it was really only a half-hearted attempt at best. However, the 1980s came to the rescue with the creation of the Injustice Gang. This group of largely forgotten villains, formed for laughs in the Justice League comics, breathed new life into characters like Claw King. But the real turning point for him was Batman the Animated Series. See, they took this obscure clock-loving crook and turned him into something awesome. The updated designs and new motivations struck a chord with fans, and suddenly, the Claw King was Vogue. At number one is Polka Dot Man. His mom was a scientist obsessed with superheroes, and she decided to take a leap into the unknown. See, she 
she worked at Star Labs, and in her quest to turn her kids into caped crusaders, she exposed Abner to an interdimensional virus. Now what happened next is something like out of a horror sci-fi flick. See Abner's skin starts sprouting these weird glowing polka dots and lumps, and it's not a fashion statement. Some of his siblings, they didn't make it. They paid the price for their mom's experiments, but Abner, well, he survived, but at a cost. He had to expel those polka dots twice daily just to prevent the virus from munching on his insides. Now what's more is because of his mom's twisted experiments, Abner got PTSD. He sees his mom's face in every person he looks at, like an unending horror show in his head. And while he might not be too fond of unaliving people, he's got a twisted way to motivate himself. See, he imagines his targets as his own mother. Eventually he ended up behind bars in Bell Reeve Penitentiary, but he would eventually go on to be recruited by Amanda Waller as part of a new squad, and I'm sure you all know the rest. As always, if there is a supervillain whose origin story you think I've missed, feel free to let me know down in the comments. This has been AJ Spatola with Top 10 Nerd, and I'll catch you all in another video. Later.